Hey, we welcome you. It's a wonderful Sabbath today, a wonderful Sabbath day today. We welcome you to Hebrew Readers Church. I'm your brother, Zach Wild. This is your brother, Kasafo. We have a great lesson for you all, keeping the Sabbath holy. If anybody has viewed our old lesson on the Sabbath day, we have taken that lesson down, and this is going to be the new lesson coming up because Allah Hayim revealed some new information to us that we want to share to the body so that everybody can keep the Sabbath day holy as we have been commanded to keep it holy. We thank everybody that's been keeping up with the lessons. Um, we've been re-airing certain lessons that we felt were influential for the body and were good for everybody's journey and their walk. So we hope that you've all been enjoying the previous lesson that we've been re-airing. Uh, for anybody that's new to the channel, we welcome you. Uh, if you have any questions, please send us an email at HebrewReaders at gmail.com or write us in the chat below or write in the comment section. We always welcome your comments and your questions. Brother Cosmo, I know you had something that you wanted to add before we got started. Yes, I uh, would like to say thank you to Brother Johnny Mendez for the help with getting the videos edited so that we can repost them for the brothers and sisters. As Zachwa mentioned, how some older teachings were getting reposted. Brother Johnny Mendes was helping, so we thank him. And now we ask you all to continue to pray for him and pray for us as we pray for you all as well, that we all continue to grow in the faith. Also, I want to thank Brother Zachwa for his work with getting these videos together and doing all this audio stuff and telling me words I don't understand, like latency. So... <laughs> I just really appreciate this help. <laughs> well, everybody, everybody has a portion in the body. Everybody can't be the hand, and right. everybody can't be the foot. So pray to higher for that. And thank you, brother Johnny Mendez. Thank you. May I keep you in your household. All right. Without further ado, um, keeping the Sabbath holy. Let's get started. All right. The Chabata, as you hear us often say, when Brother Zaka, Chabata, Chalab, the Chabata day is the holy feast and festival of the heavens kept by Ahaya, Alahayam, and his angels. Let's look at Jubilees chapter 2, verse 17 and 18, and verse I mean, 20 and 21, please. This is the angel of this presence speaking to Moses. All right, Jubilees chapter 2, verse 17. And he gave us a great sign, the Sabbath day that we shall work six days to keep Sabbath on the seventh day from all work. And all the angels of the presence and all the angels of sanctification, these two great classes, he have bidden us to keep the Sabbath with him in heaven and on earth. So regardless of where the angels are, they keep Sabbath with Allah Hayim, whether in heaven or on earth. Continue, please, brother. Uh, Jubilee chapter 2, verse 20. And I have chosen the seed of Jacob from amongst all that I have seen, and have written him down as my firstborn son, and have sanctified him unto myself forever and ever. And I would teach them the Sabbath day, that they may keep Sabbath thereon from all work. And thus he created therein a sign in accordance with which they should keep Sabbath with us on the seventh day, to eat and to drink and to bless him who has created all things as he has blessed and sanctified unto himself a peculiar people above all peoples, that they should keep Sabbath together with us. So there we see through the scriptures, this sign is for us to eat, drink, and bless Allah Hayim, who created all things. And this makes us a peculiar people unto him above all peoples. And when we keep the Sabbath day, we're actually keeping it with him and his angels. So it's not merely a man's festival, a man's tradition or vain custom of the world. This is a heavenly thing that we're partaking in and a great day of rejoicing. Let's also read Jubilee chapter 2, verse 24, all the way to 28, please. Jubilee chapter 2, verse 24. And to this Jacob and his seed, it was granted that they should always be the blessed and holy ones of the first testimony of law, even as he has sanctified and blessed the Sabbath day on the seventh day. He created heaven and earth and everything he created in six days. And Allah made the seventh day holy for all his works. Therefore, he commanded on its behalf that whosoever does any work thereon shall die, and he who defiles it shall surely die. 
Wherefore do thou command the children of Israel to observe this day, that they may keep it holy, and not do their own any work, and not to defile it, as it is holier than all other days? And whoever profanes it shall surely die, and whoever does their own any work shall surely die eternally. That the children of Israel may observe this day throughout their generations, and not be rooted out of the land. For it is a holy day, and a blessed day. And every one who observes it and keeps Sabbath thereon from all his work will be holy and blessed throughout all days, like unto us. In verse 28, it says, Everyone who observes it and keeps Sabbath thereon from all his works will be holy and blessed throughout all days, like unto us. This keeping of the Sabbath brings us into the blessings that the angels have as well. So this calling is for Jew and Gentile to keep the Shabbat, to be holy and blessed like unto the angels. Can you read Jubilees chapter 2, verse 29 to 30, please? Sure. Jubilees chapter 2, verse 29. Declare and say to the children of Israel, the law of this day both, that they should keep Sabbath thereon, and that they should not forsake it in the error of their hearts. And that it is not lawful to do any work thereon, which is unseemly, to do thereon their own pleasure, and that they should not prepare thereon anything to be eaten or drunk, and that it is not lawful to draw water, or bring in, or take out thereon through their gates any burden, which they had not prepared for themselves on the sixth day in their dwellings. And they shall not bring in, nor take out from house to house on that day, for that day is more holy and blessed. And any jubilee day of the jubilees, on this we kept Sabbath in the heavens before it was made known to any flesh to keep Sabbath thereon on the earth. So there we see that day is more holy and blessed than any jubilee day. This is why this feast is so important. And also, the angels kept Sabbath in the heavens before it was made known to any flesh to keep Sabbath thereon on the earth. So. This is important to understand that this feast has been holy before we had even known about it here in the earth. This is not a rudiment of the world. This is a holy feast, even Ahaya's feast, as it's mentioned in Leviticus chapter 23. This verse helps understand when we read in Colossians chapter 2, where Paul talks about not partaking in the rudiments of the world. He's talking about worldly feasts customs of the heathen that are vain as jeremiah chapter 10 verse 1 to about verse 3 talks about so we know keeping this sabbath today is important for us to bring us onto the holiness and blessedness that the angels have even received now concerning the sabbath day the scriptures show that ahaya's day or the lord's day is the seventh day of the week which known today is is nightfall of friday unto the nightfall of saturday that is the sabbath day according to scripture can you read Isaiah chapter 58, verse 13, please? If thou turn away thy foot from the Sabbath, from doing thy pleasure on my holy day, and call the Sabbath a delight, the holy of a higher honorable. Notice he said, from doing thy pleasure on my holy day. So when trying to know what day is the Lord's day, he refers to the Sabbath as his holy day. And we have more scripture to understand that it is the seventh day. Can we read the Acts of John, chapter 6, please? This is an excerpt from that book. But the Holy Spirit showed him to them as more cheerful. And on the seventh day, it being the Lord's day, he said to them, Now it is time for me also to partake of food. And that's confirmation that the seventh day is the Lord's day. So that's scriptural reference to understand that the Sabbath is indeed the seventh day of the week. And even here today in the Gregorian calendar, the calendar of the Romans, Sunday is the first day of the week. So naturally, we get to the seventh day, which is what is called Saturday today. Even, uh, right. even in the Arabic language, the word uh, Sabbath is the, Sabbath. Seventh, mm -hmm. it's the, it's the seventh day of the week. Yeah. So they still kept hold to it as well. Yeah. It's interesting you mentioned languages. What is it? Uh, Spanish as well. They say sabado. All right. So 
um, some of the older languages still show that the Sabbath day is the actual seventh day of the week. Um, something I wanted to touch on in regards to when the Sabbath starts. Zach, can you touch Nehemiah 13 and 19? Sure. Uh, Nehemiah chapter 13, verse 19. And it came to pass that when the gates of Jerusalem began to be dark before the Sabbath. That's key. Began to be dark before the Sabbath. So we understand, according to the scriptures, a day starts when nightfall comes. So when there's light on the face of the sky, the day is not complete. So on the sixth day, when it begins to be dark, as it's getting evening time is coming, the Sabbath is coming, but it hasn't reached yet. When night actually comes and there's no light on the sky, that's when the Sabbath has actually started. And that's why you're going to see that Nehemiah, when he saw it was getting dark, he went ahead and closed the gates to make sure the whole Sabbath didn't get profaned because the Sabbath goes from night till the next night or even to even. Uh, can you continue reading, please, brother? I commanded that the gates should be shut and charged that they should not be open till after the Sabbath. Amen. So that's what we just wanted to touch right. to make sure we understand the time frame from when that night comes in on Friday night. That's when the Sabbath starts, and then it's over on Saturday night when there's no light on the sky. So that we know we have to do everything we need to do before that nightfall comes, so that we may not trespass against Ahaya, our Allahayam. Right? Praise Yahweh. All, right. all right. Thank you, brothers and sisters. Obahaya be with you all. Salam <laughs> alaikum.